Hello and welcome back and today we want to continue looking at the WD Red 14 TB NAS hard drive. Today we're going to do some general performance tests of two of these discs in a RAID 1 environment. Now first and foremost I do apologise if there's an ever so slight echo to my voice. I'm in quite an open server area here and it's making it very tough to cut out the fan noise of other devices and the room so I apologize if there's ever so slightly an echo to my voice but what we're going to be utilizing today in stage two of our testing is two WD 14 TB NAS hard drives in a RAID 1 environment you may also notice there the Seagate drives above it that's for a future test where we're going to be comparing these drives but what we've done is we've created this RAID 1 environment a volume there on a storage pool mounted on those WD hard drives there, two disks in a RAID 1 environment. And what we're going to be doing today is several kinds of tests. First and foremost, we're going to be doing a bunch of copy paste simultaneously to see how long it, the system takes to perform those actions, as well as seeing its impact on the NAS. This is a 1019 plus, by the way, from Synology. Then we're going to be doing a deletion test, some archive tests, and finally a RAID rebuild test. Now, once again, because this is not going to be a comparison test, these results are going to be standalone. So what you make of these results from these tests should really be taken in comparison with other drives. And therefore, I recommend that you do check out part three of these tests when it's published very soon. But without further ado, let's start our tests to see how this system is going to behave and how long it takes to perform these actions. The first thing we want to do is open up the resource monitor, which will show us in real time all the different things that th this system is going to be doing in real time so we can monitor the device's behavior in real time. The next thing we want to do is open up File Station and make our way into the WD Red Shared folder. So this is the folder we're going to be accessing and it is mounted on that particular drive. If we go into it, You'll be able to see that it's on the WD Red Drive, it's in the right permissions, it's, it's got the right permissions, it's in the right area, and it's 6.29 gig of mixed files. It's contained of 685 files, and these are comprised of video files, documents, photos, music, audiobooks, and more. Next, we're going to get the stopwatch up. Let's get the stopwatch. Actually, we'll just get the clock. And the clock will let us utilize the stopwatch on this local Windows machine. We're not going to do any uploads or downloads because we'd be limited to one gigabit Ethernet. But we'll move the clock uh, over here so we can see it throughout the test. And what I'm going to do is get ready for all of these files, click copy. And then when I start the clock, I'm going to start doing a bunch of copy paste actions all simultaneously. I'm going to do five copy paste actions of the data on this disk into exactly the same directory into new folders so reading and writing from the same disk with no ssd cache enabled just to see how this draw how these drives work and more importantly how long it takes so without further ado let's start the clock now okay so we're going to create a new folder we're going to call this folder folder number one and in folder number one we're going to paste those files make our way back create folder number two folder number two same action and once again these files will be living in the system cache while we're doing this but luckily we can still achieve these results in read uh, in terms of read and write live so we'll come out there and now we'll read it we're already starting to see a slight struggle there Two more directories to go. Folder four. We're already starting to see a noticeable lag there during one of these big operations. That was to be expected. We're not utilizing SSDs here. So the usual IOPS height that you would get from an SSD is not present here. We'll make our way into five and this will do the final copy action there. Slight delays there, waiting for that to register. And while that copies with all the actions in the background, we'll pull the drop down there and we will get that clock back up there on screen. So again, that clock should be visible to you there. I know uh, screen recording software I'm utilizing here is gonna delay things ever so slightly. 
Um, right now, I'd say the speeds I'm looking at are, you know, just slightly above average, I'd say. I'm quite impressed the fact that the utilisation isn't too high. We've got a spike there of disk utilisation, of, of course, with each one of the bars here representing 20%. So we're going to leave that clock there running in the background, and I'm going to fast forward things now to the completion of this exercise. Okay, so we're finishing up here with the copy paste action. We're going to get ready to pause as soon as the jobs are done and the background tasks are completed. Right, so we can see there it took um, just a, a little around, if we remove the time it was since setting up, we're looking at around four minutes anyway, but it's still pretty good for all of those read write actions we performed. So next we want to move over to, uh, we'll leave that on screen for a few seconds, get rid of that, and now we're going to move into archiving. So we can see we've got our five folders, each with six, uh, I presume, six point something uh, gigabytes in each from the early start of the test, 6.29 in each. So now we're going to archive each one of these into a zip folder. So we're going to see how long it takes for these archives all happening simultaneously on the same disk all within the now so this will obviously uh, one of the influencing factors of this would be if you're utilizing a very powerful Z on NAS in this NAS we are using um, a Celeron the J3455 CPU um, of the 1019 plus but without further ado let's start the archiving of these files so one two three go okay so we're making our way into the file manager and now we're going to create an archive. We're going to create that into a zip and same again, create into a zip. Next again, create that into a zip. Same again, zip. Same again, zip. So again, we can bring the performance there in the background. It's getting ready to process all of those. Now, there will be um, a little bit more work here with regards to things being lined up one after the other. With the multiple read write actions we are performing, and utilizing a modicum of cache that was the memory working with the hard drives, we would have seen overlap in performance. But with compression, these are actions that kind of have to be run moderately parallel as far as the disk is concerned. That said, we are seeing the compression happen, and at around 6 gig per compression, we are already seeing these moving quite swiftly, I'd say. And for this many files being compressed at the same time, Unsurprisingly, CPU utilization is huge. So if we leave that on there along with our clock, we'll be able to get a better idea moving forward how these drives are behaving with compression happening. But I'm just gonna fast forward now to the completion of these tasks. So we're reaching the end of our zipping tests here and we can see straight away that CPU utilization throughout this entire procedure has been exceptionally high. Now from that what we can definitely bear in mind is that perhaps a more powerful CPU like a Xeon or maybe even a high-end Pentium may have achieved faster results than this. But what I'm impressed by is you've been able to monitor the disk utilization throughout and see that it's not been too taxing and that the bottleneck in this procedure has been the CPU throughout. Now as these procedures are about to finish we're getting right the way down to the final one with the archives of this being done and then what we're going to do is wait until that's done to get our speed performance check. We're coming in at the conclusion of our final compression test and we're done at 22 minutes and 53 seconds and straight away that CPU utilization has zipped on down to practically nothing. So we're gonna reset the clock there and move on to the next stage of our test. The second to last test here, our penultimate test, is going to do with deletion. And what we're going to be doing here is selecting all of our zipped up and standard deletion files, all these ones that we've created for our test today, and we're going to delete them. So down here, we'll look at our total capacity being calculated off of our 14 TB disk, and we're going to be running a test on 61 gigabytes of deleted files. Now, we're going to see how long it takes for this to delete all of this data, 
we're going to get the clock ready. You're going to have to bear in mind ever so briefly that there will be a slight difference of time, a matter of seconds, and we're going to get our clock here, get that ready, and we're going to start the deletion now. Right click, delete, delete everything. You may have also noticed that we have not enabled a recycle bin here. So we'll be able to see how long this takes to delete and the files have been deleted. It, I mean, the clock was largely unnecessary there. There was no delay. The files have been largely immediately deleted. And once again, there is no recycle bin on this drive. So those files would have been lost permanently too. So we've done a few tests there as well. Why don't we do our RAID test? What we want to do now is rip out one of the drives from our NAS. When we do this, what's going to happen is the NAS is going to freak out and suggest that a new drive needs to be installed in order to rebuild the RAID. Now, just because we removed the old drive, it's worth highlighting that this, even though we introduced the same drive back, the RAID rebuild of a 14 TB will still require the entire RAID to be built from scratch once again. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the timer ready once again, but this time we're not going to start the clock until we've reintroduced a 14 TB drive. So once again, there's our storage pool there. We're not using BTRFS or SHR. We're using traditional RAID 1 environments here. And I'm going to now pull one of the drives out of this device and I'm going to replace it with our storage pool. I'm going to make sure I pull the correct disk out. So if we go to our HDDs there, we're going to find there's our Seagate. We're going to go into one of our WD drives here and we're going to identify the drive. We're going to have a look here and go to our info about the disk. There we go. We can see that drive is nice and healthy. And I'm now going to pull this drive from the system for the video. Wait there. Shortly, there we go, you've started hearing the degraded noise coming from this NAS to denote that the system has noticed a drive has failed. Now, remember that even though a drive has failed as far as the system is concerned, and I know that beep in the background is rather annoying, what's quite interesting about this is we can still access all of the data on this disk. If we have a look, we can still access this data, we can have a look at photos that we've stored inside the device. Let's go to one of these albums here. We can still access these files. Because even though there is, have a look, this was from Pride 2018, I believe. We had a look there. We've got lots of photos there to cycle through them. And remember, this is all via the web browser as well. We can come out of there. And what we're going to do now is we're going to reintroduce that drive into the RAID and then we're going to ask the system to repair. So I'm going to introduce that drive now. And we are going to have to make sure to factor in the time difference throughout this. So I'm just going to move over and introduce a new drive into the system. Okay, so we've introduced a new drive. We're then going to start this clock now and we're going to allow the system to let me repair this RAID. In the background here it's going to say that the RAID has been degraded and we can make our way into this action and repair. We can see that a new drive has been added, click next and now we're going to see how long it takes this system to RAID rebuild across this disk. Well, our 14TB RAID 1 using those new WD RED hard drives has completed and I've got to say it took its sweet time. It got to a point where I even had to leave and go to sleep. The actual completion time was approximately one day 
for that 14 TB. There's the beginning of the start of the repair there at 1.43 p.m. on the 15th of November. As you can see, it went all the way through to repair at 1.06 p.m. on the 16th. So almost one whole day to complete the RAID 1 configuration of this 14 terabyte NAS hard drive, uh, RAID 1 array, where we had to re had replace one of the drives. Now, obviously in a RAID 5, you could look at even bigger repair times there. There are ways in which you can improve RAID times, but for the sake of this NAS, I won't go into too much detail because really we're looking at this drive. Now, don't be put off by the fact that the RAID rebuild on this took as long as it did. RAID rebuilds on bigger drives with more data will always take more time. Unless you're looking at ZFS file systems, you will always need to effectively rebuild every single block and bit on that disk. Even if the disk is, is pretty empty, you're still going to need to build the layout of that disk within the RAID environment exactly how it was before. But... This has been my RAID 1 test of the WD Red 14 TB drive. Again, there are lots of things that we can be doing moving forward, but I'm going to move over now to the Seagate versus WD comparison video. We should go live shortly. If we go into this WD drive, we'll make our way into that 12 TB. One of the things we can do is see if we can run the test on this disk in the background which i'll have for you in the next video but otherwise i hope you've enjoyed this video click like and subscribe if you did and i'll see you guys next time